what is good we're back again just churning it out just churning them as fast as i can edit it we got the tripod we got a tripod wouldn't, wouldn't this be more churning no, i like to churn it out no, this way you that's know? raining it's making yeah, it rain sure sure that's the same thing making them rain videos up in this bitch how you doing, Turquoise Matt? We got Turquoise Matt back Dude, in the I building. I fucking love this sweatshirt, okay? It's so light. It's so comfortable. Reminds me of home. Yeah, yeah, it does. Exactly. <laughs> fucking Casey, do I know any turquoise? That Jared Leto looking motherfucker. We got no Casey tonight. Uh, White Jesus is taking the <laughs> night off, but we got another member of the tripod joining us. Matt's uh, dear friend, Riley Bymaster. What's up, Riley? Good to have you on, buddy. Thanks, man. Good to be back. Good to be back with uh, Brandon Walker over here, too, sitting on your right. Uh, looking good. So glad I don't to have, have the a, hair of Brandon Walker or the size. Not quite. Not quite. He's a large human close. being. Very big. And he's he's fascinating. But I, I view it in a tier above him. So oh, perfect. All right. Perfect. Well, you, you guys can find Riley on the Twitters at Riley Bymaster. He's our Shrine Bowl insider. So we're going to oh. talk a little Shrine Bowl or a lot of Shrine Bowl today. Uh, but, but real quick before we start, can I get Zay Jones's number? Jay, Zay Jones? How'd I do that? I don't again? have Zay Jones' number. Zay Flowers. I DM Zay. Let me uh, get... I do have... <laughs> let, can I... Get, let, I just want to send him some random texts like, hey, man, you're the best ever. I love you. Uh, what's going on? We'll if see. We get, can we'll we, see. Maybe. Did you ask Justin Shorter why he transferred from Penn State? I did not, but Should've. Justin's a cool guy. He's cool, Should've. so I didn't want to put seems any like pressing a nice, questions seems on Seems like a nice guy. He's from Jersey, though, so. He's cool. Every bit of 6'3", 222. Good to know. So, Riley, you were you were there, is it a week-long practice? I, I, can't, I can't say I know much about the Shrine Bowl or the other other bowls that happen. I'm not even going to mention them. Um, so, so take, me, take, me, take us through the process. Like, you know, what's the week like there? Oh, it's hectic. Players are, they're arriving on... Uh, on a Thursday, they start interviews with teams on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They start practice on Saturday, Sunday, and that runs through Tuesday. They get a rest. They get a walkthrough. And then the, the game is the following Thursday. So it's a week-long process for them, for the staff, for everybody. It's nonstop, 18, 20-hour days. Uh, but it's good. They learn a lot. They go through and get their first taste of the league. And uh, they, they get to meet you know everybody else in their class at their position. They're hanging out all week. They're tired, they're working, but it's awesome. It's it's long week, tiring week, but very rewarding and very fun. And so what was the Falcons had the East and the Patriots had the West? Is that how that went? Correct. We had Patriots and Falcons, full coaching staffs there. Uh, Mr. Belichick walking through. Billy B? Laser focused as usual. Billy B walking through with uh, his usual cutoff sleeves and did you no ask khaki him, like, shorts and Did you ask him the question I sent you to ask him? Unfortunately, I did not get to talk to Billy B. Okay, but no he, Billy he B. and Arthur Smith were, were were all business all week. Nice, and then you don't get much feedback from them on what they thought of the players because why would the fuck they tell you yeah. what their opinion yeah. you know, of those players were? So was uh was no, a, was not was O'Brien there with with the Patriot staff? He showed up midweek. Okay, uh, he did. He he flew in. He got hired. I think. The, that Friday okay. uh, after they got in that Wednesday or Thursday. Okay. So he came in, um, you know, watch practice, got to sit with the staff a little bit, but didn't do much hands-on. You know, I, the, none of the, the coordinators or head coaches did anything other than advising and meeting. It was all the, the lower level positional guys and the assistants and the analysts who all got to step up and take a position and actually coach as if they were an actual linebackers coach or corners coach. So it was fun to see everybody kind of get to rise up and, and show what they've got a little bit from the coaching staff side too. Gotcha. So, fun so, from all aspects. So it's a bit of an interview process for them as well too on, on that side, something that might get overlooked. Yeah, hundred percent. That's why we see, you know, even the other uh, all-star senior game this year, you know, they pulled a, a, a Patriots defensive line coach to be the defensive coordinator who was at Chattanooga with us. So I knew him very, very well, but he's getting to showcase his stuff. So he'll be a DC at some point in the next few years. So it's it's an audition for everybody there, players and coaches alike. Very cool. And and what's your role throughout the week? Oh, throughout the week, it's everything. So we got to do, you know, scouting and background work all season long. But for this week, it was all just operations and you know, players would get hurt. So we'd have to replace them and you'd have to coordinate travel for both exiting and incoming parties and making sure that 
they're good with hotel rooms and keys and jerseys and equipment staff and letting both teams know. So it a lot goes on with it, but it's just all operational stuff for 18 hours a day. But it's a blast. It goes by super quick. And in, in, in your overall, it's not like one side or the other, east or west. You kind of yeah. For for us, everybody. for our for our staff of 10 to 12, it was just everybody. So some would coordinate with each team, but most of us were just wherever you're needed, you go. And you say yes, and it's awesome because it's you get to interact with a bunch of cool people and meet just great guys around the league. So super fun, super rewarding, but very tiring. And you're in Vegas too, so the extra air they're pumping into the casinos help. Mm. Mm, those terrible sounds of fake winning. <laughs> uh, well, and secondhand smoke from the casino. They don't let them smoke inside, still, do they? I they I guarantee. Yes, they absolutely do. How do you expect them to get do. senior citizens there and then them not be able to smoke their Virginia Slims? I guess I have never been to Vegas. I went to Reno, and I can't say that they were letting them smoke inside there. But maybe, uh, I mean, have you? I mean, just ask Big Co about the old uh, Big M Casino. They let them smoke on there. All right. Uh, so I know Matt's got a big list of questions to get to, um, but real quick, and maybe this will parlay into it. I mean, tell me about Zay Flowers because we still, I love Zay Flowers. How was how was Zay Flowers the whole week? I heard you got his. Number. I got to. I got to spend a lot of time with Zay. He was in my interview group. Just a plus human being, super fun, uh, funny guy. Like, will talk to anyone if you know he's not going to shun anybody away. You know, he's not. Hey, I'm above you because I'm going to run a four two and be a first round pick. He, he talks to everybody. Just fantastic kid, super fun. Gets along with all of his peers. Just awesome player, awesome human. I'm all in on Zay Flowers. I'm I'm number one fan now. So just incredible kid. Yeah, that I mean that that I mean that parlays into one of the questions I had. I mean, tell me more about some experience about these guys you had with these these guys off the field. I mean, just super fun. So like each of us had a group of 15 or 16 players that we were essentially responsible for all week, just making sure they're in the right spot. And it's weird because you've spent the last you know 12 to 16 months just digging into these kids' backgrounds watching their tape, trying to figure out who they are going to be on the field. But then you get off the field and he's a bro like you had in high school or, you know, he's, he's just one of your guys, right? So having 15 or 16 different personalities kind of come at me after I'd watched them for a year was wild and super fun because everybody's different. Everybody's a good time. So just being able to sit down and just chat with them, you know, while some were in interviews, some were sitting at the table waiting to get pulled. It's it, it was very surreal. Like Michael Turk, a uh, punter from Oklahoma, just fantastic person. Sat there and had deep talks for 20 minutes, and we could have talked for hours. So he's he's one that just stood out and was just a, an awesome person. Could have talked to him for, for weeks on end, but just getting to do that was very special. Yeah, I'm sure it's cool to get to know, to get to see these guys after you've been watching them via how whatever mannerism you're watching them, these cut-ups and game film, those kind of things, and get more of the human element of them as well too. I'm sure that's always nice to see as well too. Um I know you I know you mentioned uh Turk is did anybody else stand out other than other than Zay within your within the group of 15 guys you had? I mean the fun part about my group was I didn't have any I didn't have any shitheads, which thankfully I, I was worried that I was going to have, you know, a couple that were just problematic and you know, I was having issues with finding them, but they were all fantastic. Jake Bobo was a really good kid. Uh He's a leader. Whichever team he ends up with, whichever wide receiver room he ends up in, we'll be lucky to have him. Just stand-up guy, responsive, respectful. He's a leader amongst his peers of you know NFL draft pick quality kids. So he stood out. He was great. Uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson, just freaking there to get his business done. I mean, he was driven. He was at his interviews early. Great kid. So loved getting, especially the, the two UCLA kids off the field was wild. That is just wild experience meeting them because they're both just stand up kids. I remember seeing DTR um during the during the first season of QB one when with um uh with old Tathan um because uh, he he was backing up Tathan at um uh Bishop Gorman. So I'm sure it was a bit cool to see uh DTR going home there back in Vegas. Right? Oh he's com he's he's super comfortable in the city. Just yeah. he said he was glad to be back home. It's it just I mean, getting to see family, he had, I don't know how many family members he had at the actual game, 
but it was by far the the most of any other player. Oh, so, for sure. Yeah. Super fun to see him back home just getting to do his thing. Without naming any names, did you hear about any shitheads off the field while they were, while honestly, they were there? Honestly, honestly no. That's good to hear. I mean, I think everybody just knew that this is the first taste of, you know, work interviews. You got to disguise so it, right? You can't be Yeah. You can't be showing your ass at at the Shrine Bowl. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to yeah. keep that under wraps. Yeah. Who are some guys some, in the skill position players? I mean, obviously, we care about all the players, but yeah, this is fantasy yeah, football. I mean, maybe this some fantasy, offensive line here. This there, is, but I, oh, yeah. I already know who Riley was man crushing on during during the skill position practice or during the offensive line drills, but uh, we won't get into that. Um, He's my guy, man. I graded him so highly, and he had, he made himself a lot of money last week. I was happy to Who's see that? Uh, uh, Penn State center Juice Scruggs. Mm. Love me some juice. Stud. Heck of a player, great background. What round do you think Heck he'll of a go person. in? Riley said second round. Riley said day two. So I, I, I think he could push late day two. He'll probably end up fourth or fifth, but he's going to be a guy who will be a starter at some point. Rams need a starting center. You should, I hope you talk to your guy over there that you were talking to. While you were uh, I, I did talk up my guy uh, to my other guy over there. Good. So, oh yeah, so we're, we're in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Riley's got guys. <laughs> I don't None have many, but I have, I have a couple guys. Um, but yeah, uh, so who, skill so, guys who yeah, stood out. Yeah. I, I I won't go into my favorite quarters and 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 backers from yeah. the week. Uh, I mean, we can talk about that off air, but we don't really. But this is a fantasy football podcast, so we care about running backs, wide receivers, tight ends to a lesser extent. Hundred quarterbacks. I've got a few. I've got a few. We'll start at receiver. Obviously, Zay's day of practice was just unreal. He stands out. He plays at a different speed. He's going to be a first round pick. Okay. And yeah. He should you think, be a, you think so? Ninety nine percent sure he'll be a first round pick. That's if Marquise Brown can be a first round pick, Zay should be a top fifteen pick. Top fifteen? If Marquise Brown can go in the first, Zay should go top fifteen. Is, Zay's not quite as fast as Marquise Brown, right? I mean, Riley saw him in Zay, person. Zay's gonna run between a four two eight and a four three two. No way. And really? with, with the combine numbers, I wouldn't be shocked if he runs a four two something, a four two two. Four two two? No. Wouldn't be shocked. Zay can fly. He's wow. the fastest person I've ever seen him at, with my own eyeballs. Not on tape, but in person, he is the fastest I've ever seen. Wild. Moves at a different speed. Mine was Should be a late first, Mine was late first round pick in rookie drafts. Yeah, you gotta move him up, baby. Let's go. We've been on him. We've been touting him. We liked him. I said, I said, I said he was gonna be one of the first guys off the board day two. But I, I think I I said that he could be a first rounder. I don't know if he would be. It kind of does. I think he, he, it kind of does depend on the combine. You know, I know he weighed in a little heavier at the Shrine Bowl than what he, what he was listed at in college. Um, so if he's still that fast, weighing a little bit more, that's good. That bodes well. Although he was shorter, but that helps the BMI. I mean, if you care about that. I mean, we see guys like Jalen Rager go first and <laughs> Marquise Brown probably at the top of that spectrum. But we see all these fast guys go and Zay's a complete receiver yeah. who will run. Joystick. Too bad. Why would he not go first? Too bad Al Davis isn't alive still. Oh, too bad. He'd, he'd trade up to six to get Zay. Darius Hayward Bay. Too bad his son's getting the Lloyd Christmas haircut <laughs> <laughs> still. <laughs> still all right. We got, uh, we got Zay. Who else? So Zay stood out. Uh, a couple other receivers. Michael Jefferson from Louisiana was phenomenal. A guy who's 6'3", 210, long arms, long strides. Who He stylistically runs like Michael Pittman. I don't think he has a Pittman ceiling, but he's going to be a day three guy who could pop and score seven or eight touchdowns as a rookie. So he's so a quiet kid. He's, driven, a, he's it, got a bigger frame guy. Bigger frame guy, but he can also run. Okay. He's so heck of a deep threat for 6'3, 210. So okay. he can move super wide catch radius, was unreal in red zone drills. So Mike stood out. Uh, Demario Douglas of Liberty is electric. He's a slot guy. He's small. He's 5'8, five, five, 165. But of the scouts and personnel who were there, he was the winner. Everyone talked about Demario. Everyone wanted to know more about him after day one. He continued that day two and three so much so that, I mean, we had just people texting us asking, hey, 
tell us more about this kid. So a name to keep an eye on. Uh, A.T. Perry had a really good week. He was a lot more fluid than I thought he'd be. I was a little bit lower on him coming into the into the game week. But he surprised me. He's, he's very fluid. He's technically sound. Wide catch radius. So probably going to be a late day two, early day three guy. Really fun. He's going to be what Hakeem Butler was supposed to be. Mm. Butler sucks. Perry's good. Very similar stylistically, but Perry's that guy. God, this was the this was the this was the ringleader of the Hakeem Butler fan club back in the mm-hmm. day. Oh yeah, we like. Oh, some Hakeem thoughts Butler. and prayers, buddy. Tease but at least tease. at least he didn't cost us much. We told you not to take K- Nikhil Harry at one two or one one. We were we were down to take Hakeem Butler in the second round of your rookie draft. I mean, I still don't think he sucks. I think he just couldn't put it together off the field and in, in, within here he was delayed coming up and and it just. Just doesn't it just work happens. out. It just he, happens. That's why you know it's part of the reason why we do care more about what these guys are doing off the field and how how attentive they are and how 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 coachable they are and the character really. As we go, you know, we've said this a bunch. As we go further into this evaluation of of, of you know NFL rookies, we care more and more about that off the field. Yeah. How's that going to translate? Because no matter how talented you are, if you can't come in and put the work in. It's yeah. not going to work out for you. So yeah, just ask, just ask Johnny Manziel, hmm. mm-hmm. or or even guys like I mean, we saw the Jalen Rager when he ran the deep post this year with Minnesota. He didn't run out the route, right. and it was a pick. I don't know if you remember that play, but sure. O'Connell ripped into him, and I don't think he played the rest of the game or the rest of the season for that matter. Corey yeah. Coleman had the same issues in Cleveland, right? You know, five yep. or six years ago, just couldn't get the mental side of it. So there's a lot out. of stuff. That, yeah, 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 a lot of stuff we can't see, and we have no. No control over what happens there, so it's it's part of the game, but it, it makes it fun. Yeah. We, but anyways, a couple other a couple other backs that stood out. I'll touch on quickly. Jordan right. Mims, Fresno State, okay. uh, really subtly good mover. A little small. He's like five ten to two oh five, maybe. Probably going to be a late day three guy who settles in at a third running back spot on a depth chart. But an injury or two in front of him, and he's going to contribute. And be a solid producer. So Mims is a name to keep an eye on. Mo Ibrahim from Minnesota is, I love him so much. He's small, but he's compact. I mean, some of the best balance I've seen in the last three or four draft classes. So a bit of an injury issue last year. He tore his Achilles, but came back this year and scored 19 touchdowns with 1,700 yards. So you tell me, like, he's okay. Uh, I love Mo. Great guy, too. Uh, Big music guy, by the way. Loves all kind of music. Great kid. A uh, couple tight ends. Leonard Taylor, Cincinnati, was the second tight end there for the last couple of years. But he is fun. Athlete, built well, moves well. Going to be a day three guy. But one to stash on a taxi squad. Because if he like, gets a chance, he, sounds he like could Oliver. end up being the better. It's honestly very similar. So I think Lenny's a little bit thinner. Okay. But he's still got enough muscle mass to to block if he needs to. Okay. So he was fun. Travis Vokalek from Nebraska was my favorite tight end I watched. All around player, heck of a blocker, moves well, hits the seam. It's like 6'5, 250. Okay. Super fun name. He might be a guy who gets drafted at day two and you're thinking, who is this? But he actually might produce. So okay. he's fun. All the quarterbacks looked, I mean, pretty solid. Aiden O'Connell's probably going to be a guy who hangs in the league for 12 years, like very Chad Henney like Chad Henney was a name that got thrown around with Aiden O'Connell this week. Um, so a, a, a name to stash just in case, but smart kid, super nice, heck of a mustache. So <laughs> well, well, he's draft gotta be, Aiden. Well, he's got to be getting qual- he's got to be getting close to getting social security benefits by now too. I mean, yes, he is older, and that's why he can grow a mustache, but. It works for me. Only one and that can rent a car. At the <laughs> yeah. Time will, yeah. Yeah. He was the one renting cars. That is correct. But yeah. he was fun. But uh, those are guys that stood out. I mean, every, nobody really had bad weeks, but those guys popped for sure. And then um, going into the game here, it was a low scoring game. I, uh, all field goals, actually. Um, what was the cause of that? Shout out to my guy, Jake Moody from Michigan. Hmm. In my interview group, heck of a kid. Another great mustache. It was the guy. guy snapping him the ball, not the kicker. Crystal, a plus human. He, he he and I rose, took a couple pictures together, tagged him on Instagram. Shout out Crystal. Long snappers are definitely people too. What's the Instagram handle, Riley? 
It's like sea stole light. No, yours. I'll, uh, I'll, oh, <laughs> I'm not giving out mine. I'll give out crystals though. Um, I'll give that to you. I'll, I'll give that to you in private. Do I have to request uh, to follow? One hundred percent. But I will okay. accept. I'll give it to you in private. Accept. Gotcha. <laughs> I thought you wanted a crystal drop. Uh, no, I wanted a Riley Buy Master drop. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not that DMs. exciting. I'm more I got a hot wife, but I'm not that exciting. But you gotta, you gotta get the, you gotta get the requested follow to see the hot wife. Apparently, so. <laughs> oh yeah, hundred percent. But for you, any day. Any day, it's but more yeah, intriguing. Man, like, it's more intriguing when you have to uh, <laughs> request to follow. You know what's he hiding? You know what's. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like sending a risky text. You're not really sure what's going to happen. He's right. hiding the link to his OnlyFans. He's hiding the link to his OnlyFans. Yo, account. I'm, man, we need a FF Dynasty OnlyFans. <laughs> account here. Yikes! Feet uh, picks only. <laughs> Feet picks only over here. See what's below this table. <laughs> Nothing. I'm not even wearing pants. All right, Crystal. He's a long snapper. Is that what y'all are talking about? Yeah, he, yeah we talked. Remember, we talked. I remember. That's your boy. Oh yeah, that's your boy, the Penn oh, State guy. Oh yeah, yeah. Matt definitely has movement over there under that table. <laughs> He's about to play some dashboard as on the way home. As he should. Maybe I will play some dashboard on the way home. That's not a bad idea. <sighs> Anyways, back to the game. What do you think caused the low scoring game? Was it like bad offensive play, good defensive play? lack of gel or was it just the fact that Atlanta and New England don't have great offensive schemes so when you get a group of players like this who just met for the first time six days prior it's really hard to mesh and run a clean offense and everyone will tell you that even even guys in the NFL right if you sign somewhere or get traded you're going to need like Chase Claypool you're going to need time to adapt learn the scheme learn just your quarterback how he throws the ball it's a lot of chemistry stuff so it's we knew it was going to be hard to get offenses moving anyways that's why we ran the ball a lot running was good it's just hard to execute in the red zone when you met six days prior um it's also easier for defenders to come out and just do their thing on their side of the ball yeah. rather than run you know, C ball, offensive tack- installs. C ball, tackle ball. It, correct. Or if you're corners, you just do your thing and cover. Like if you're impressed, man, you're going to, you're going to throw hands and then flip and run with them. But if you're in cover three, you just have to find the ball, right. And not get burned. Whereas the offensive offensive side, you're trying to coordinate. What's my landmark for this comeback. Is my quarterback running a five or seven set drop? It's a lot harder to just sink and mesh everything on that side of the ball. So 100%, like that's why it it wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything schematically from either team. I thought both teams actually ran the ball well. Um, I'm assuming Matt you know, Patricia was not calling plays. He was not. <laughs> it, it was it was one of the Patriots uh, offensive, Thank the God. lower offensive staff. The butt chin? But, no, Bill O'Brien. Yeah, he's the butt chin. Yeah, but Matt Patricia was, he was I the, know. okay. But they brought, they brought was O'Brien pa- back to call plays, yeah, right? Yeah, was, yeah. Well, what were Patricia and Judge even there? I uh, know I saw Judge. I didn't see Patricia. I so think he, he might have got even, shit canned. May or may not have been. I, I think I was he got not sure. I think he might have gotten canned. And for obviously, I'm not reasons. gonna speak on that because you know liability purposes over here. Sure, but, I'm, yeah, I'm not gonna, sure. I'm gonna look that up while you're talking here. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it's just tough to get you know 65 players on one team together and say, hey, here we're gonna install. 15 to 25 plays and we're going to run them and we're going to score 30 points. It's just not going to happen. So that, and plus we had a lot of just dogs on the defense side of the ball too, which helped. So they played really well, which was fun, but low scoring game, but it was exciting. Like they moved the ball. Well, it wasn't like a 72 total yards and in, in four quarters. Yeah. Like you said, I I think it was just, um, uh, was just the red zone stuff because a lot of the field goals that I saw were pretty short field goals. So, yeah, like a couple were really short, a couple were 50 something, but I mean even even still. I I think we had a better defensive group than the other college all-star game, which was very apparent watching both of them. We had much better corners, much better D-line, backers were productive. Uh, on the other side, that the one that aired on Saturday was not the case. So, they were blowing coverages and guys couldn't hang hence defensively. Why Jake, so that was hence why Jake Hayner had a big game. But correct. I mean, and even like he he's rough around the edges, like throwing balls behind people, not hitting crossers consistently. So he's fun, but I mean, still very rough. Yeah, he was so, getting um. Uh, he, was he in the portal before before like two seasons ago? 
when um uh, I don't know when, when the old Fresno question. State was the when the old Fresno State coach went to uh Washington. Is that correct? Am, am I correct in saying that? I don't know. I don't know if he was from? the portal at all. Okay, uh, I, I think know. he was flirting with the portal. But did the Fresno State coach was the old Fresno State coach that now the coach at Washington? Am I correct in saying that? I believe so. Okay. I, uh, being an East Coast guy, I don't watch much West Coast because it starts at midnight and ends at four a.m. Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, I, I, it sounds right. But I think Jake may have flirted, if not entered the portal for a short time. You don't have but, kids, so you don't have a reason to get up early. I mean, other than a job, no. Well, but it's Sunday. Still, it's Sunday. <laughs> that's true. I mean, yeah, but still, uh, tea times are nine a.m. in the morning on Sunday. So I gotta be. Now we're I gotta be ready to, to ride. Oh my god, the tea times at nine. I would love to sleep until nine. You, well, you gotta get out there before the tea time. It's not like out. you're rolling in at eight forty-five. Like you're getting there at seven thirty. Gotta roll some putts. Seven thirty for a nine o'clock tea time. You, you, when you're playing for money, you don't. You I was don't about to say you got too much money on the game. On the game, you don't fuck around. I don't. I don't think that the day we played golf together, you rolled up an hour and a half early. Well, that's why I was driving two hours that day. Plus, it was 130 degrees. Yeah, it was hot that day. It was fucking hot. It was very great hot. time though. It was a that was like July. It was he came down here and we played over at Shadow Moss, and it was hot that day. Sticky. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I don't want to fuck around with golf is because especially here in Charleston, it's so hot in the summer. Another guy we were playing was was wearing black shorts and a black golf shirt. Hmm. Trying to track that heat. <laughs> no trying about it. Yeah. Anyways, he did. Yeah. Great putter, though. Two putt everything. Bastard. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we've covered the uh, the Shrine Bowl experience pretty well here for you. Um, so I think we're going to stick around here. Um, uh, going to yep. get some more um, uh, love about the uh, – some more in- info about the 23 class. Um, yeah. So if uh, if you're watching on YouTube, um, we, you're going to have to hit the next video. Uh, we'll just keep rolling on the podcast. Or play this one again like 10 more times before you go to the next video. Hey, you do you. Uh, but I uh, no, appreciate everyone for joining us. And uh, we're going to we're going to stick around with Riley here and cover some more. We'll get into the 23 class. That'll, that'll be good. Maybe look at the, look at put them up against some of the 22 players. Yeah, I know. I know you like them Tennessee boys. So I want to hear uh, just how good the Tennessee wide receivers are coming out this year. Whether that's, to be continued. Uh, whether they're good or if that's just the offensive scheme, because not a lot of people are super, super high on those guys. But I don't know how you couldn't like Jalen Hyatt. I mean, Josh Heupel looks like he's like a like an offensive line coach at some like college in like Missouri, not a former Heisman Trophy finalist. Mm. He looks like every high school history teacher I've ever had. <laughs> All right, well, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button, the likes, the, the, the notifications, leave a comment. Who's your favorite player coming out of Shrine Bowl? Uh, podcast, give that five-star review, whatever thing you're on, whatever platform you're listening to. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be back with more for your pleasure. Peace.